Hello everyone, I'm Drumat and today we're going to do a Tulia jungle game a bit different than the other videos because I'm going to focus more onto the talking part and less onto the gameplay because I have some concepts that I want everyone who plays Tulia in general to know them mostly about the jungle but there are some other Tulia useful stuff there in this video and also some other concepts for other junglers basically right now I'm in flex I'm with master tier players from solo queue here so it's quite quite a more difficult game than I expected because I wanted, really wanted to chill and play the game standard but um, apparently I'm going to have to also try hard while talking and in this video I'm going to talk about multiple Tulia concepts concepts such, such as uh, matchups for jungle and when she's good when to pick her I'm going to talk about runes and builds the defensive versus the offensive states that you can play Tulia jungle with and I'm going to talk about a bit of jungle uh, macro in terms of what you have to do in general as a jungler and for example when you want to gank a lane how do you determine if you really ganked a lane or not concept stuff I will explain more when I get to that part I might also blabber around some stuff but generally I'm going to try to focus on the talking so we're gonna start with red I'm going to talk about the build soon I'm going to talk about the runes and the paths but first I want to talk a little about matchups as you can see first before that I uh, actually wear it blue because you definitely need it on Talia, such as on Morgana, such as on Leah. You need blue buff as on Kartus, as on other AP mages, because it enables you. And uh, I'm in a simple matchup, relatively simple, like Viego. So it's relatively chill. And this was really not efficient. But if you really want to know when is Talia a good pick, you should go to stats like op to sites like OPGG, like UGG. For example, UGG has uh, the Master Plus, Platinum Plus, and all ELOs tracking. So you can put there uh, the list and you can see all the champions. And basically, you can know if your champion is going to be a good counter pick for the enemy champion. So basically, on that side right now, Talia is a very good pick. Why did I skip rights when I was talking? <laughs> I shouldn't have. Anyway, if you look on the side, Talia is a very good pick, for example, into Morgana. It's a very good pick into most AP stuff, such as Fiddlestick, such as Kartus. And it's a very bad pick, if you look at the stats there, into champions. I could have healed from the rights, by the way. Into champions like Xin, like Rengar, like Volibear, like Kha'Zix. Champions that stick on you. And... When you know this kind of stuff, you can actually be careful when you pick the champion because you know, well, I'm gonna beat it or well, I'm not gonna beat that champion. And so I oblige you whenever you play Talia to know that you are in a good matchup or in a bad matchup based on the stats. By, by the way, right now Talia has a 53% win rate, very high percent win rate, A plus tier above Master Plus. So you'll know, you'll know that she's actually good. You'll know that she's actually good there. Oh my god, man. I got juked by that and Viego is gonna come. Maybe I have time. Nah, not. Okay, I have cooldowns. And my man here. Ah, Yone is first. Shield me. Shield me. Good. Thank you. I'm going for the other one. Because, uh... Yeah, we have we had an issue here with Yone. All right, so whenever you pick Talia, okay, my bot is winning. You should know. Please don't juke me a second time, and thank you. You should actually know that you're going to be strong or bad based on the matchup, because you know. If, if Tulia has a 55% win rate against Fiddlestick, if Tulia has a, I don't know, 58 win rate against Diego, you know that you can pick it into those matchups because it's going to be relatively simple. I'm just saying random stuff. You need to look on that side and check for your champion or any other jungler if the stats match what you want to do. Because if you pick Tulia into a Kha'Zix and into a Zed, you're going to struggle because they're going to constantly invade you, you're going to have a bad time and you're going to hate yourself. This guy might be dead. Uh, oh. And right now, as I said, most matchups are the AP matchups that are uh, to Leah favorable, so to say. And as you can see, I'm power farming a lot because that's what you gotta do early on to Leah to get to your item. Now, on top, I'm not sure how he died towards the tower. He shouldn't have. 
I threw a random W there. He really shouldn't have died there. But yeah, I guess, I guess that happens. Okay, coming. Ah, uh, he had that now. He has the dash. What? What? Yeah, this is a flex game. Yeah, this shouldn't have happened. Okay, so I'm going here and it's likely that I might get invaded. You need to be careful onto that. So, generally if it's a melee champion, Kha'Zix, Rengar, Hecarim, you're going to struggle. But if it's a melee champion that likes to power farm, so such as Udyr, you're going to have a good time against it. Because even though they are sticky on you, they cannot really kill you that easily. And that matters because if Kha'Zix one-shots you, then that's a problem. But if your teammates have time to come to help, then you have a lot more range or survivability, so to say. And now, as you can see, I power farmed and I'm going straight for the raid. I got myself boots, I got myself the lost chapter. Let's move to the second part. Uh, I want to talk into the second part about the actual... Uh, I could go top, actually. Look, this is a very bad gang, for example. Because he lost a lot of time. And this is insanely bad. They should have... If, if Twitch dies here, they are bad on our team. Yeah, they are. They were so bad at that, man. Okay. Okay. I can get the Yone. That was simple. So we got the free kill for no reason. Maybe I could get more. Ah. And I get some free farm here. Okay, they might get the Drake. Generally, on Talia, I pass the Drakes. So, it's fine. If Diego invades me, it's fine. We got something out of that because Yone runs it down. But what I want to talk about next, besides the stats thingy that you can do and to check. And also, she's in a good spot right now, guys. She's not garbage. She can be useful into the jungle, into a lot of matchups. But you shouldn't perma-pick her into bad matchups. So, like on mid, you shouldn't really pick her into... On mid, you don't pick her into Katarina, right? On jungle, you don't pick her into the Kha'Zix, maybe Hecarim, maybe other matchups. Okay, so that's that. They got Drake. I don't care about that. I really don't. Because I get my advantage from the power farm here. And we might have a kill. On the guy, I smite this, I go mid. Okay, I power farm this again. This is what I want, actually. This kind of... Insane, insane power farming is what I enjoy. I'm going straight to blue because I won't have mana if I get frights. And so we get levels out of that. Now, the second thing. The second thing is what gang lanes, sorry, you should gank and when as Talia and as other junglers. I also played Morgana a lot this patch because she's rather strong. And what you need to know, for example, as Morgana is that you don't really gank lanes until you're sure you're gonna get the kill. And that's what happens onto the Talia as well. Because, for example, you have a Renekton on top. Okay, you can gank that. You have a, for example, you have a Yone on top into a Wukong. You don't really gank that because it's very hard to hit the combo onto the Wukong that has... I'm gonna ignore... I'm gonna full mute that. Because Viego didn't... What? That's from the... That's from the... <laughs> that's from the guy. That's from the... A farming shop. I'm a fortunate vibe. Alright. Done with it. And you don't have to explain that to people in lower years because you'll eventually have the level gap as you can see here. You'll eventually have it and you'll eventually be more useful than the opponent regardless. So I was talking about going onto some lanes to gank or not. You want to go to the lanes early and gank only to the lanes that have CC. So think about Twisted Fate stun, think about Volibear top stun, think about Leona on bot. And what you have to do is to actually gank those lanes where you could 100% hit your combo and just power farming rest because you cannot really get that much by going to a lane and just missing your combo. You're going to lose a lot there if you do so. He's going to alt out. I'm, I was 100% sure. Okay, gonna dodge that. I'm gonna do a deeper word here. Okay, I can get that. And so, you want to do that. You want to actually be on top of your game when you can, for example, onto the levels. And then we can actually go there. Right. Okay. 
okay? That's a very bad... That's a very bad Twitch, man. <laughs> Look at this guy! Why, why did he die? Holy moly! Okay. <laughs> I'm enjoying this! Yeah, we won that. I think he will kill also the Asso, but might be wrong. Yeah, okay, it's fine. It's fine because on top we win. But we, we got that right. Okay, I'm going straight into Ludens. Although, Everfrost. Yeah, Everfrost is a good pick this game. Because you're gonna give that slow to them and they're going to hate you. So, just gank. Empower from when you can, but just gank the lanes that you know you're gonna get kills off. Because you're going to struggle if you go to a lane that has no prior and you lose the 2 versus 2 or 3 versus 3. If you look at the map and you have a strong top laner and you know with that top laner you can win the 2 versus 2 then for all means go there and get wins and get the 2 versus 2 done for example if you have a Draven Leona bot you know they are most likely to get ganked by the enemy jungler because they are going to have prio no matter what in most cases in most cases or a Draven plus something I say that because Draven is very strong as a champion and so you can go there I won many games out of that and counter gank the actual the actual enemy jungler that will come out of you onto you so this is this cattle is on both sides i could go here and wait for the jacks yeah okay i think i'm in a bad spot get him what get him Okay, easy. Easy. Keep going. We win that. Okay, keep going. That was the easiest thing of my life. And that karma is broken. Now, the top run, the bot runs it down, it's fine. They don't know how to play against that. They could have lived. I pinpointed where they shouldn't have died, and they died, so that's really on to them. I'm gonna put a deep vision word. This is a very good vision word right here and i'm also gonna check that so we don't have it okay i can go both side i can go both side and win there and so i can get that scuttle the only place with teleport which i kind of dislike Jax should come Jax should really come They actually won. We get also the Senna. Yeah, she's gone. I'm gonna start this. And this is a massive advantage here. This guy, ain't it? That was the most random W I could have possibly done. I don't have Smite. So I have to go like here and check. So that's fine. And just full get that. You can see I'm already doing much more than Viego and I'm winning the one versus one strictly because I farm and I didn't listen to Twitch to come to random fights that I know we lose. So this is a perfect example of what I was saying before. I just waited to be strong, to be where, like a feeder six old at level six. Just waited for that moment. And then I could have simply carried the game instead of going. If I had the Yasuo and Senna bot in my team, I could have go bot and abuse that. Now look, they are also... Well, I could actually go there. Yeah, nah, never mind. They are done. We're just gonna play off Karma and Jax, because that's pretty much where the win is. But if I keep farming... Look, Jax is doing his thing already. If I keep farming, we win it. Keep in mind, in Flex, you're going to have some lower knowledge teammates and some higher knowledge. This guy is Masters, for example, so... He doesn't really fail. I could ult on top of him. Nah, it's fine. I don't go bot, I don't have to go bot. They can go up to the inhibitor and even even attack the inhibitor. I don't mind it. Because that's not going to win them the game. Jax is going to win us the game. I'm playing around that. And they got the Yasuo, so we're also good. If I stay around Jax and just W on his stun, we're going to win. So again, the lesson two. Simple, 
just go towards the lane where you have Puryo and counter gank or gank and don't really stick to the lanes that uh, that are going to lose and you know that they're going to lose. Just full mute them because it's simpler. I'm just gonna ult that. Okay. Easy enough. You can go get that tower. I also have a lot of gold. I can also go a bit deeper. I have ever frost, so now I'm ballsy. So you got the second lesson, right? I can go right around. I can actually wait her somewhere here, but it's a lot of wait time. Yasuo is mid. Yeah, I don't mind. If she teleports, if she teleports, we get another kill. So I'm just gonna wait here. Look, look at this. Look at this. I'm getting flamed by the Twitch, by the way. The seven deaths Twitch. Eight. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Alright, and now that we got that, it's likely that Diego has his jungle up. And it's actually mine. What? Really, man? I don't care about the Yasuo. We don't, really don't. I'm just gonna power farm this. They, they can get in the inhibitor and bot, I don't care. They can really do get that. Okay, and we want this. Well, okay, now I have to go bot. <laughs> I actually have to go bot now. And I think my these minions will stop my recall, but I'm not sure. This guy will win. Most likely, yep. So, easy. And now I go bot with three items onto a Yasuo that's overfed. And these items... Oh, this got nerfed. Okay, never mind. And these items will help me to actually win this and to be on top of Yasuo. I can just ever force Yasuo in full combo through his wall and it's going to deal a lot of damage to him. I just have to be careful. And ever force will keep me alive. Now, the last thing that I really want to emphasis on is the aggressive versus defensive builds that you have to use on Talia. So there are two kinds of builds and you have to see whichever fits you or whichever is good into the context of the game. Because uh, you can definitely do good work with both. And I think I'll have to be paying attention to the next fight. And on top, we're not going to lose anymore. On top, we're absolutely not losing. We can go, we can go bot. We can definitely go bot and we're going to win. Yeah, we're going to win this. I can ult in. I can definitely ult in. Okay. Bye. And now we won this very hard. What? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Careful to that. Careful. Why? Why? Get the kill. Ah, she's, she's, she got away. Okay, I'm going to get this. Jax is going to win top lane. As you guys can see, I control the game from top to bottom and I've easily won it. Don't steal it. Thank you. Alright. So, the two ways that I talked about regarding runes, regarding actual builds. The two ways that you can play Talia. In runes and in builds, it's two ways, defensive and offensive. The defensive way, I'm not even gonna pass it to him. If he thinks he's gonna get this, oh. Oh man, you just inted. No, you're not gonna get that. You can troll me, but you're not gonna get... You're not gonna get that. You've been mean, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. <laughs> and yeah, you should pass it to your ADC. Because he might run it down if you don't. But I really don't care at this point. I really don't. Plus, he seems to be winning. Alright. Game over. So, the two ways. First, you have Dark Harvest. And second, you have, obviously, Face Rush. These are the two main ways to play Talia 
aggressive and defensive. You want to pick Dark Harvest in matchups in which you know you can eventually scale and kill people and to deal tons of damage and you want to pick Phase Rush in games in which you know you already have tons of damage. So for example, this game we have Karma mid, Nami support, eh, we don't really have that much damage and we're also against Viego. In this game, both picks could have been good, but in the context of having a Jax and a Twitch, yeah, maybe Phase Rush could have also worked better, but it depends. If you have, for example, a very strong Z Assassin on mid, a very strong Bruiser on top. In this context, these two champions, you don't really need to have Dark Harvest, and Dark, and, uh, Dark Harvest works better against champions that you don't really need to run away from, because there are a lot of those. So if you think that the enemy Udyr or Hecarim have, uh, if you think they have actual actual phase rushes themselves, you might need them because you won't escape. And so that's one way to go for it. Now I play with Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Raven of Santa, Presence of Mind, Cup the Grace, and these rune stats. I believe that Presence of Mind, Cup the Grace should be mandatory as secondary. So, oh, that was close. So, first options could be Dark Harvest and uh, Face Rush, for example, those two. And in rest, you could see for secondary for Presence of Mind and Cup the Grace. That's for, it for runes. For items, you could definitely go for something such as Everfrost for uh, defensive and Lyandry slash Ludens for offensive. Now, if you go for Everfrost into Zonia, that's the most defensive way you could probably go for itemization and it's also the strongest against things like this comp. Viego, Yone, Yasuo, it's going to be a pain in the ass to not die instantly into their burst. And so, we argue we can do deeper stuff. I don't care, I'm gonna leave that. Hopefully, Karma. Thank you. Easy. That was deep, stupid, and they're going to surrender soon. And yeah. I'm already playing with this a lot. <laughs> but you can see on the side of on which side of the map we stomped and on which side we didn't. And so yeah, that went pretty damn well. Okay, that's done. Now I could go into this spot wait for someone and one shot him and you can do stuff like that now for itemization as i said you can definitely go for this smite which is challenging smite reduces damage as you can see from the marked champion so you can use it on champions that actually want to kill you and blue smite you can go into matchups like champions that you need to dodge abilities from that could be a needle spear that could be getting away from something depends on kite versus burst right you want to kite it or you want to burst it and why did Yone suddenly change his opinion about that? I really want to limit this. this. Oh man, he doesn't die. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> was that from the Twitch, man? Yeah, I'm just, at this point, I'm just having my fun. I'm really just having my fun, because it doesn't matter. Look. Look how much it matters. Not at all. Not at all. And so... You have to choose a combination between aggressive or defensive as I did for example for this game. I went aggressive onto the Dark Harvest because we needed some damage but defensive on the fact that I went for full armor and uh, Everfrost HP and so these two provided me enough to not int and to be safe overall. Could have gone for face rush into Everfrost which would have been an overkill probably for this game but in general this went absolutely well. This went absolutely well. And really, that's all you gotta do as Talia, understand when to roam, when to gank, understand what's your power plan. On Morgana, it's the same for me. I don't really, I just go for random items, and Rabados could have been better. Yeah. I'm just gonna Rabados it. And I'm also going for other boots, like the ones that I cannot find. You 
this one. And also vision words, guys. Vision words are very, very important, useful in the context of these games. It's extremely simple to bite them, it's extremely simple to place them, and it can actually win you game games. And yeah. I'm going to just power farm my way through now. As you can see, we did all that we gotta do, and we basically outplayed it majorly. And so now the jungle meta changes a bit and the Hecarim also gets nerfed. You're going to probably see Tulia being way more stronger than right now, even though she's already pretty strong for like a 53% win rate. Jax will win this if she, yeah, if he doesn't get hit by that. No one's seen me enter this. And I'm gonna guess that Yasuo is coming somewhere here. Okay, yeah. I'm dealing a lot of damage and I'm not afraid of this. I'm really not afraid of them. I cannot kill three people. Yeah, I, I knew I could I couldn't beat the third one. <laughs> but yeah, one versus three and killed two carries. <laughs> and Senna is absolutely dead. Senna is the strongest and the best player in their team right now. Because Yasuo died too much. <laughs> But we play a protect the Twitch comp, which is, uh, which doesn't require necessarily the Talia, but it's a good addition to the damage. And so, I could go here for something else. Don't even know what really. Or believe it or not, because they have Yone, Yasuo, Gwen, and Viego, and Senna. Yeah, anti heals. This game is mandatory. I'm not gonna get this Baron because I'm not gonna respawn till they get it. I think. Yeah, most likely not. But I'm gonna go bot and I'm gonna get that guy and we're going to end the game. Well, actually I'm gonna get it. Actually. Yes! Nice. Nice. Also at this point you could probably sell refillable to get some vision words. And I'm not cropping this video because I believe, again, the gameplay that you've seen is not what I want to present necessarily. What I want to present is what I talked about. So. This was more like a, tutorial, a complete tutorial in some concepts than uh, actual gameplay video, but I really hate to stay for like some hours to make a proper presentation, so you're gonna live with that. Man, this guy actually deals them. Ah! I'm gonna ping myself, I ain't it. <laughs> I'm just running it down now. Because when the game is over, I really like to suicide for any reason. Look, we, we cannot we cannot lose this. What was that? <laughs> this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Overfed Twitch. I don't even need to... Lol. Okay. Don't even need to be here. Yeah, you cannot. You cannot beat that. <laughs> But she healed a lot from that. I just want this game to end so that I can start editing it because I said all that I had to say. <laughs> but I'm gonna focus for the last part. I'm just gonna get random items. And we also have soul in one minute. As you can see, I don't even prioritize Drake's early on. Not on Morgana and not on Talia, strictly because these champions need some time to get their first item and to actually be useful. For example, Morgana's level 6. And so. If you are a Warwick, you can definitely get it early on. But until yeah, you'll generally do better if you don't fail those fights. If you just wait for your scaling point, they can get one to Drake's, it's not a problem. But then again, you'll face the issue of teammates that suicide randomly. That's definitely happening in lower elo. So you gotta see what's the best moment to do something, really. You gotta see that. I think he's going there. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my revenge. Nah, I'm out. I don't want to unwear Swan and Assassin again. Or do I? Come on! I hate you! With all my might, I hate your champion. I hate any Assassin that scales. Yeah, just... I don't wanna... Ah, oh, just then. I could have go closer and try to kill him, but he healed a lot. But that's actually an issue. That's actually... I beat him now. <laughs> but you can see how I space myself. And sometimes I even int. You could see. 
that it would be better to not do limit tests like that sometimes. And I don't care, I'm just going in. Ask, do I don't have any vision on me? I could just... Oh. You can also do that. And you're gonna kill anyone. I'm having insane lags, man. What is this? I'm having two frames. I cannot... Do anything. That's why I don't really do money solo queues videos. Because I'm gonna do that. Don't care. I'm gonna get a second Rabanos. Don't do that. Really don't. But it's over. So over. Because Twitch is just gonna... Press auto attacks. Yasuo has no chance against this guy. Yasuo and Dione have no chance against this guy. And we have a protected Twitch comp, so it's done. Although, if I didn't randomly int, I could have ended faster, but I do like the limit tests. And my laptop is not keeping up with this, as you can see. All right, really, really, really easy, <laughs> easy team fight. They cannot do anything about it, man. With so many shields, they really cannot do anything about it. Okay. Okay, maybe nice, Jax. Jax is there. Never mind. And Jax kills them both and he's done. But he attacked minions for some time there. Oh! Oh! I could ult, but I really want him outplayed. Okay, never mind. I mean, I'm going in. Huh. Interesting. We're so bad. Okay. Yeah, he missed. Okay, I can get that. I think I almost killed him there. Yep. That guy is good. I really like how that guy plays. Really enjoy him. I could go here and one shot someone because 100% someone will come here. I don't know if I can one shot Gwen. I don't know. Holy moly, that karma AP. I'm gonna heal a bit. I really wanna one shot someone here. <laughs> a panic button. Okay, okay, I'm backing off. The panic button. I'm gonna press a Q from a distance. Not even bothering. Alright, I'm going in. I'm just gonna do this. That was simple. <laughs> oh, poor guy. This was a slaughter after a certain point. Yeah, they surrendered. So that was the tutorial, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And see you next time. I really hope my recording didn't break. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed and got the points that I was trying to make. And see you next time guys on the Summer Rift. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Goodbye. Bye bye.